this is very, very typical English market town, really. Mm -hmm. Removing the commute just means I'm doing proper work that's not sort of interrupted work. So this is our street. I'm spending a good hour and a half with the kids during the day, which I wouldn't ordinarily. So I work from home. In the house, it wasn't ideal. I used to sit on the edge of the sofa in the, the children's room trying to work. So it doesn't put in a good frame of mind when you walk into the room and you're treading on Lego and tripping over all their toys. And you couldn't leave anything open, so you'd be half working and you'd have to close it because the kids will fiddle with it. And it was just, it wasn't practical. So I had to have my own space. But it's actually, it's expensive to have your own space. And whilst we've got an expensive shed, it's no more, it's much less than the cost of a room in a house. So, you know, once you have that in mind, you can start sort of going to town a bit on terms of the quality of shed you have, because it's always going to be cheaper than a room. Got sort of a gold wing door. So it's just on gas strut. It's actually quite a thick construction. It keeps cool in the summer and it's warm in the winter. It's obviously wider in the middle, like lots of us. <laughs> and uh, if I'm standing up, you know, I don't need more, a bit larger environment than this. I don't know why, but I think I like, I like, you know, when the door's down, it's cosy. But it's not too cosy. You don't want it to be too warm or too cosy. And it's quite nice how they've done the lighting as well. The obvious issue with having a round pod is having to have round furniture <laughs> or the backs of it. So um, we had to get the table made and the shelving made. So because obviously it has to fit the diameter of the... And it's quite nice to get a nice sort of view up the garden through the, through the porthole. I quite like the fact that I do have a window, but it's not a big window. It's quite a, quite a minimalist room and there's sort of less distractions, you know, it's just real sort of get your head down, get on with it. For proper concentration, I think you need isolation. And being shut up in a confined space is isolating. <laughs> you can make it pleasant, <laughs> which I've tried to do, but essentially it's isolating. That allows you to focus your thoughts and concentrate on what you're doing. You know, I want light in here, but I don't want a big picture frame window. I want to keep an eye on what's in the outside world, but my reason for being in here is to work. And so, you know, I've got what I need to work. I don't need more than that. You know. I could have got a, I think these come in four metre or five metre pods. Well, it wouldn't have fit in, the, fit in its space as well, into its environment as well, but also it would probably be too big, it would feel too big to properly focus. What about the, 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 even the idea of a pod? What? Well, aesthetically, I mean, if we go back out and you, you can see it, I think, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was originally a circular patioed area with a little round chair. So it just immediately fit into the space. And I just think with the backdrop of the beach hedge, it's just natural rather than like a square structure. So something of that shape will naturally fit into, fit into its environment. You'll never get a, that shed to look like it's meant to be there. I just think it just fits in very neatly into its environment. And you know, it'd be nice. It's always going, this is the color, it obviously is new. You know, it's going a nice sort of grey colour to it now. I mean, you know, I even like the sort of the, the staining on it, you know. And, you know, the, this bush was a bit, it was probably about here when I had it. It's slowly it'll grow, this honeysuckle will grow over it. And it'll just blend more and more into its environment. I want to do some more planting around the edge of it to uh, hide it, basically. Yeah. And this is in the winter, in the spring and the summer, when all the planting's up. It's really hidden away. Open.
And the sound is amazing. Apart from your child gurgling away in the background, it's very, very peaceful. The only thing that... It's dark sometimes, and I'll jump out of my chair because a squirrel will run over it. The, the dome opens up. You definitely do feel good at the outdoors, having the big window. Anyway, but just so that's the heat escape at the top. And it's quite nice as well because one of the problems is direct sunlight is the glare. Actually, I don't get the glare because the trees filter the light. I don't know what the ideal space is, but probably go a bit smaller and it would be still comfortable. Not necessary for one person to go bigger. Let's see how to wire it. Yeah. I've got Wi-Fi from here, belted underneath, underneath the desk. And lots of file carriers. <laughs> I'm afraid being a lawyer involves lots of paper. A lot of my work involves reading. <laughs> you know, reading files and files and files of papers. I don't have an hour at work. I never have a whole un uninterrupted hour at work. But I can have an interrupted hour here. And uninterrupted, you can just get into it and be much more efficient at it. It's nice not to have the distractions. Hello. I think the beauty about not being in the house is there's more of a going to work mentality by going out shutting the house door. Call me when you're free. Bye. And I sort of have, I have to have rules so I think all people that work from home have their sort of working from home rules that uh, you have to stick with. It's all about that routine. So I, I like to be at my desk at 8.15. So I work all the way through till two o'clock have a sandwich, have a nap till three, then come back down, kids come home at 4.30, I go and have a cup of coffee with them, come back down, go back at half seven to spend the rest of the evening with the family. The other thing as well, when you've got children, out of sight, out of mind is quite a nice thing. <laughs> yeah, they, they forget you're here. It's quite nice in the summer because I, 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 mean, I, I do sort of idle a few minutes away watching the kids playing football in the, in the garden. It's quite nice. But, you know, cause when they don't know you're watching them, just watching them playing is quite fun. So you have a collection of tiny structures. <laughs> yeah, so there's a, a mixture of a real shed. The greenhouse is a project for the summer. And the other? And then this is my construction was for Kate when she was four, but I didn't finish it until she was ten. So we're going to move it back there and have some like bantams, do you know, those like little, chi little chickens? I'm planning on them being not quite as noisy when I'm working. <laughs> so you've always liked little structures? Well, it's, yeah, of course. Yeah. More interesting, aren't they? Is there a culture of having a shed in, in Britain? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, there's, I guess there's always that people say about Englishmen that there's a little bit of an English boy in them. And I think that sort of hiding, hiding somewhere at the bottom of the garden might, be, might appeal to that sort of sense of being a kid, you know. It's an escape. There's definitely a bit of an escape about it. And the, the idea that what I want to do is to have the planting to be eventually growing up all around it. There's something a bit about sort of hiding away. <laughs>